then we did whole class projects. I said, what could 30 kids or 150 kids in some cases, what could they accomplish in one or two or three days that would make a permanent change or, or a visible change for, for the better in the life of this city. Notice here what we're really talking about is a sine qua non of citizenship. You have to take an active role in the community. That's what defines a citizen. So some of those were turning vacant lots into gardens. That's an old classic and it never wears out. Uh, putting on shows or plays or variety shows for old age homes and for children's wards and hospitals and for veterans wards at veterans hospitals. The, the real trick is finding an audience. Kids are natural performers. They're natural hams. They love to do it and they learn a great deal about ensemble work, about how to make your part uh, integrate with everyone else's part, including the lighting person and the costume person, the direction. Those are wonderful things to do. I would at any given time have two variety show teams traveling through New York City and anything, banks, other schools, old age homes, were grist for, for our mill. Because any audience works for a set of performers who need to be immune to the audience, don't they? I mean, they can't say, oh, I don't want to play before. Those people, whoever buys a ticket is the audience. Can't predict that. But you do need an audience or you can't really grow beyond uh, uh, a preliminary point in learning this wonderful magical skill of becoming somebody else. There. Uh, so it, we started a food co-op every year. We found out where the wholesale market was. There will be one in, uh, wait a minute, I'm in Pasadena. There's a wholesale market around here somewhere where all the restaurants and food markets go early in the morning, like 3 a.m. or 4 a.m. or 2 a.m., and they buy whatever they're going to use in their work wholesale, and they bring it back. The people selling that stuff don't care who they sell it to, and for, with a few exceptions, they don't have one price for Team A and one price for Team B. These trucks come in and out of the city all night long. And somewhere around here is the wholesale market. Find out where it is. Take your kid there. Buy a quantity that will set up a little stand. And the way we did it was we took orders through all the classes in the school ahead of time. And then what was left over, we set out on the the main desk in the front office at 3 o'clock, let me tell you, there was never anything left ever, not one piece left. Most of the stuff was pre-sold, pre of course, because you can offer people about a 20% break on their food, uh, raw materials, and it's much fresher than than if you pick it up through, uh, through a food market, because they... they uh, cold storage a lot of the food. The bigger ones will cold storage it for nine weeks before they sell it to you as fresh. Uh, I insisted on substantial community service one day a week and that almost invariably was a loan. In some of these applications, you do not want a culture of children traveling together because then the experience is muted severely by the, the protective insulation that running around with a group of friends do. So, so 
I did the bookings at first, but I said you can always book yourself and replace the placement that I, I got for you. So my kids one day a week would be scattered all over the 300 square miles of New York City. And if you say, wasn't that dangerous? Didn't have a, couldn't hold a hair, how dangerous it was just to be in the, the school. Uh, and in 20 years of doing this, we didn't have a single incident, even though many of the placements and distances my kids traveled, I think you might think were reckless. I always cleared these things with the mothers ahead of time, but I didn't bother even to inform the school administration. Uh, parent partnerships on school time. Now, if you're homeschooling and you're watching this, uh, this is what you do all the time. But in the position I was in, I saw that the institution of forced schooling had as one of its logics that you would weaken the connection between the student and their family. So I tried to create a, a, a remedy for that. I said, you can always book yourself out of all your school classes for a day or two by drawing up a partnership with your mother or your father or your grandfather and setting out to explore some part of the city and to produce some understanding or, or some service or whatever. What you have to do is design an application and I'll be as fair as I know how to be. It looks to me that that was the equivalent or more of what I would have asked and expected from you in the days you were there, off you'll go. And I said, as a byproduct, you'll get to actually know your mother as a human being rather than as someone who makes breakfast in the morning you don't see again until evening. Uh, I had a standing arrangement that you could always exchange school time for starting a small business. And if you think there aren't a number of small businesses that kids have an advantage over older people in, then you're quite mistaken. They don't pay rent or upkeep. They can offer many services that are essential and substantially undercut professionals offering the same service. Think only of, well, Los Angeles is a, uh, is a city of homes, I guess. But New York City is a city of apartment buildings where you'll have 75 or more families living in one vertical unit. Now imagine that you have to move out of one of those places. Not easy to do. There's virtually no parking at all in, in a substantial part of the city without risking instantly being towed from the spot. And secondarily, the city's a bedroom community for many old people without families and often from spouses without their opposite gender number. If you're a 75 year old woman and you want to move from the 14th floor to the third floor, you have an expensive proposition on your hands. But let me tell you, a team of 13 year old kids can do the work three times as fast as a professional team and you can pay them uh, a fair amount, but that fair amount will be a tiny fraction of what you'd pay. Now here's a service that's utterly necessary, probably thousands of times a week all over New York City. And people grieve when they can't meet the terms of that service. Here's a, a wonderful business that schools could encourage. How about pet sitting? 
What do you do in New York City with your goldfish when you're going away for three weeks? How about your dog? How about if you're going to be in the hospital for two weeks? Does everybody, as they do on sitcoms, on television, have a friend they can call and say, take the dog? I guarantee you, no, that isn't true. And many people would feel leery about asking a friend to do that service or frightened. Uh, I first learned about the possibilities in, of kids and, and, and work as a substitute for curriculum when back in 1968, I learned of a 13-year-old boy who was making $26,000 a year walking dogs, except he never touched a dog. He booked the dog walking. He hired school kids to do the dog walking. He trained them how to walk two or three dogs at the same time with one of those little appliances. And he took, I think, 50 cents a dog. At the time, his father was a postal clerk, I think making $15,000 a year. It was 1968, it's 35 years ago. And his mother had some other low paid income. The 13 year old boy was making more than his mother and father put together.